Hey friends, welcome to the Johnson City Living Podcast, where we learn about the people, places, events, and flavors that make Johnson City just a lovely place to live. I'm your host, Colin Johnson, with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. If you're interested in buying or selling a home in the area, or if you're looking at investing in a rental property, give us a call at 423-930-8003, and we will look forward to helping you. Now, let's get to today's episode. It is a beautiful April day here in Johnson City. The flowers are blooming. The sun is out. The pollen is like everywhere. Carly saw a car the other day. She said, that's the prettiest black green. It was kind of the the greeny hued car. And and then we found out it was a black car that was covered in pollen, but it made it look like this super iridescent cool green color. And so... (laughs) The pollen is rocking. All my friends who've moved here in the last couple of years are like, wow, we got allergies and we didn't have those up north. And I'm like, yep, yep, we do. So enough about pollen and spraying. I am excited to introduce my friend for many years and um, excited for you guys to get to know Rebecca Russell. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Can Colin. I call you Becky? Because that's how I Becky know you. Becky is absolutely but fine. But we got to go with Rebecca. We want the Google to pick up <laughs> Rebecca Russell because that's what you write under, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Johnson City Living Podcast. First thing, question every we hit everybody with, what is your favorite thing about Johnson City? The mountains. The mountains. Absolutely. You can hear them calling, can't you? We had looked in, uh, you know, Maryville and, you know, maybe uh oh just surrounding areas like Sevierville. and no but no. Maryville, chattanooga okay. and we drove all around yeah but they're not close enough to the mountains yeah and it just isn't the same it's a beautiful backdrop yeah every day i'm like and today's crystal clear really and i was like man the mountains look good and the trees are starting to bud out and they're starting they're going from that grayish brown to like a real light green color, and then they darken up. It's just fun to watch every it is. year. Doesn't get old. Yeah. Now, where did you and your husband move from? We're originally from Ohio, which was just hilly. Yeah. And beautiful farmland. Yeah. Then we raised our family in Dallas, Texas area, which is flat. Light as a pancake. Brown. Brown or steel. Yeah. Um, so no seasons other than summer. So after 30 years, it was a great place to raise kids. Right. And for his job. Yeah. But it just, we were done and the job was holding us there. And once that was no longer a thing, it was like, let's go. Let's go. And how did you navigate just to Johnson City? Like, I mean, there's a lot of mountains around. You could have gone up into Virginia, up into, you know, Pennsylvania. There's, you know, there's lots of options along the Appalachian Trail. Well, I'm married to a very logical man. Okay. The opposite of me. What is his job? What, what, what did he do in Dallas? For IT. Him? Oh, gotcha. <laughs> He's a sharp yes. individual. Yes. So he was looking at the taxes mm-hmm. and all those things. So Tennessee already was ahead on yeah. that. And uh, we just took a couple of weekends and came here and scoped it out and the only extended stay hotel back then in the Tri City area was in Johnson City. Oh. And so that was our hub. And then we would just go off and see which areas appealed to us. And I said, Jonesboro's lovely, but I'll never live there because I don't want tourism. I don't want crowds. Where do we live? Never say never. Yes. Jonesboro. So it's outside the of oldest the city town limits. in Tennessee. Yes. Yeah, you're not too far from downtown. So, um, but it, it's just, uh, there's a different feel, different energy in each of the Tri-Cities. I agree. And so we just sort of took our time. We rented a house for a year and a half in Telford, which was beautiful. Mm-hmm. And the only thing is, 11 is the in and out for yep. everything. And we're done with that. Yeah, you it's kind of like don't want... commuting. Mm-hmm. And you're like, I don't want to deal with that. Yeah. yeah. So. I think Telford is one of our unsung secrets in the area. Yeah. Like if you are hearing this, Telford is the up and comer. Oh, it's beautiful. It's a, you know, for people who drive an hour every day, you're only driving an extra five minutes like right. every day because you can be in Johnson City in 20 minutes instead of 15 from Telford. Mm-hmm. But it is the, the way the mountains kind of just surround it is gorgeous and the land's flat and rolly and it's just beautiful. So, yes, I, um, I like Telford. 
So maybe somebody will listen to this and move here. Call me to find them a place in yeah. Telford. Where did you grow up? A little farm factory town in Ohio. Yeah. Called Cary. Cary, Ohio. What did they make there? Uh, there's, you know, there's just different industry, but limestone is the big okay. thing there. Yeah. And a predominantly Catholic town. Mm -hmm. Has a minor basilica, which... If you know St. Peter's in Rome, that's mm -hmm. a major basilica. Okay. So this little town of 4,500 people has a minor basilica church. With a big dome. Yes. That's cool. That's where I got married. It oh, was beautiful. Yeah. That's awesome. Look at yeah, it. People make closer. pilgrimages to this little town that doesn't even have hotels. What? Yeah. It's fascinating. That is cool. That's cool. Okay. Um... So you are the local president for the FEM City chapter. Tell me what FEM City is. Tell me what you guys do. It is a uh, mastermind slash networking group mm -hmm. for female yeah. professionals. Okay. And it's really open to all levels, whether you're just trying to figure out what you want to do and you're just coming to explore and see what everyone else is doing. Or you are in a transition or you're established and you're just looking for that community. I think community is the biggest thing. Um, you know, and, and, and just today we had a, a meeting and one of the gals said, I'm almost to the empty nesting stage and I've not really had time for me. Mm. So where do I go? Where do I find people? Because there's no, you know, soccer mom stuff. There's no, you know, so. No empty nest mom. Yeah. Events. So she, you know, has a career, mm -hmm. but she doesn't have that network or support. Right. And, or anything that's just hers. Yeah. So she was thrilled to find us. That's cool. So. What's the, um, the history of Fem City? How did it get going? And, and then do you know, like, yeah. and, and then, um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that and then we'll talk about how you brought it here. Well, the uh, founder, Violet uh, D'Alelia, I probably butchered that, but it's Alea, yeah. just a beautiful gotcha. name, yeah. beautiful human. Uh, she was an entrepreneur at 22. Oh, wow. And when she was uh, doing the networking, she just never found anything that felt right. It mm -hmm. was just not, you know, it just was too cold or too businessy. I don't know. She she just didn't find what she wanted, so she went ahead and created her own. So the tagline for Fem City is "Business for Your Soul," mm. which sort of tells you a lot. That's cool. And uh, it's just a you know you know the book "Men Are from Mars, Women Are from Venus." We are different. We are, a little and different. I love the di I celebrate the differences. Amen. Yeah. And so it's just nice to have that safe place that mm -hmm. just that place that's just yours yeah and you can just be you and yeah. be accepted good and bad and what happens at fem city yes. is said at fem city Absolutely. stays there yeah. and the number one rule though my rule besides is, no boys <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's not my rule but oh, yes okay what's your um, number one my rule? number one rule is no drama no drama not allowed. man don't you hate the drama yes just and it's really funny because the few that do come, if that's their thing, they don't stay because we don't. We don't allow that. We don't play. Yeah. So. I think that's a good policy. No drama policy. Yeah. yeah and I mean it. I worked very hard in my life, personal life, to not have that. So I am not. Carly and I are the same. We don't like that. We, you know, if you want to have drama, that's okay. You can have it somewhere else, yep. but not in our office. We don't want that around. So um, what do you guys talk about? Like today, how the meeting, talk about the meeting. And oh, so how did you, sorry, rewinding people who are listening. Um, so this lady starts it. How did you go? How did you find out about it? And then go, I want to start a chapter in Johnson City. Like, where did that come from? There was someone who was starting the chapter here. Mm -hmm. And it appealed to me because I have, there's a lot of healing that had to be done surrounding 
female relationships, the whole mean girl stuff in school. Mm -hmm. and Was this for you personally? For me okay. personally. Yeah. And a lot of women. Yeah. And so I was looking for, you know, I'd done a lot of that work. So I was ready to start trusting again mm -hmm. and new to the area. So, and new to business. I mm -hmm. didn't start my business till 58. So that's a lot, a big learning curve. <laughs> and so I knew I didn't want to do it alone. Right. And I needed a lot of help. Mm -hmm. So when I heard of what that was all about, it was like, I'm, I'm going to check it out. Yeah. And I really liked the energy and it just, the other thing I love about it, it's not exclusive as far as industries. Sure. So you can have five realtors. You can have five essential oil people. There you go. It does not matter. It's we all lift each other up. Right. And I love that. That is good. And so, again, if that's not your thing, if you're not about rising, you know, up with everyone, right. you won't stay because you're more focused on you. Gotcha. And so I really liked it. We meet once a month, which is nice because some groups meet every week. That's a big commitment. Mm -hmm. I love it, but it's a big commitment. And it's affordable. And I just love the energy. And it just felt good yeah. to be around like-minded women. Very different, but all after something positive and it's just, it was, and you're not alone. You hear them talking about their challenges and you're like, oh yeah. And all ages. So me being older, I can share some of that wisdom with them. And them being younger, they can share a lot of their technology and all that yeah. kind of stuff. You're like, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> so then the gal that was leading it had to step back for personal reasons okay. and it was going to go away. And I just, it was like, I, I am not really wanting to lead, but I don't want this to go away. Right. So they got stuck with me to ah, keep it I'm going. I'm sure they're <laughs> feeling very blessed to have you at the helm. How old is the chapter like here? Uh, five years, I think. Okay, that's cool. And were you at the start kind of thing or you came in pretty early? I, I came in maybe, you know, a little less than a year. Yeah. Yeah, so. It's kind of been fun to watch it grow, I bet. Yes. How many members do you have or regulars? We currently have about almost 30 members and around 17 or so like we're there today. So. How do, we, um, how do people listening find out about it? Well, I am considered a networking machine. Yeah. So I do get out I there quite a that. bit. Yes. <laughs> Yes. And uh, you would make a great real estate agent. <laughs> Should you want to join our team, we would oh, love to okay. have you. Yeah. You're a great uh, networker. Well, so run into you somewhere. Do you guys have a website? Do you have like a There's a website. Instagram. I create, I, I'm mostly on Facebook. Okay. Um, so I create the event and that goes out. But word of mouth is really yeah. the best. Yeah. Uh, so. So if they were going on um, Facebook, what would be the page they're looking for? My uh, either business page, the Rebecca Russell. Okay. I'm the Rebecca Russell across social media. Okay. Um, but I'm mostly on Facebook. Gotcha. Uh, and then my personal page, Becky Russell, mm -hmm. I promote on there as well. You post City on there. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have like your own? You probably have your own internal page too. That yeah. You can yeah. For members. It. Gotcha. For members. What is membership like? Is it expensive? No. It is. They actually have a free community membership. Look at that. So it's sort of like try before you buy kind mm -hmm. of thing. And you just come in and see what you, is this a group of people I think I'd like to hang out with? Yeah. And uh, they have access to one masterclass by the founder a month. There is the Facebook community of the members who are all over U.S. and Canada. That's cool. That you can ask questions. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a nice, and then you have access to the meetings. Yeah. And then there's a business membership where you have all of that plus a monthly fee of fifteen ninety nine. Fifteen ninety nine. Sixteen I mean, bucks. Yeah. A couple a of deal. cups of coffee. Yeah. That's like a, a drive through meal. Yes. Yeah. So uh for a month and you basically have a business coach with that because 
you uh, have access to the directory mm -hmm. of members that are all over doing all sorts of things and they are so giving and it's just it's phenomenal i mean the and you get a chance to collaborate with people too which is really fun yeah i did a a um webinar with a gal who is a high-end business coach mm -hmm. and we did one called sales that don't suck okay <laughs> Because for a lot of women, the sales part is icky. Yeah, like you have like an aversion to it. Yes, yeah. because we're all about relationships. Right. And we don't want to offend anyone or distance anyone. Right. And or I used to have a lot of money blocks. So that was part of my story too. So like feeling like you deserve to make money or earn right. money. Or, or it's just not important. Or it's not important. Yeah. I just need enough to get by. Yeah. And so she came up with three bullet points that she was going to address to business owners who have issues with sales. Mm -hmm. So maybe they're feeling stuck in their business. They're just not making what they want. They make a certain amount and that's it. So she had her suggestion for how to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Then I come in with what essential oil has an emotional component that will help with that. Mm. So every oil has an emotional component, every which a lot of people don't know. I didn't know that. So I know some of them smell really good and make me feel good. Yeah. Like the so, shine you brought. <laughs> I'm smelling that. It smells great. So cypress is the oil of motion and flow. Okay. So if you're feeling stuck, then you could diffuse that oil as you're planning your week or your year or whatever. So... And it's, it's science. It is not just, I see the look on your face. No, <laughs> I am a huge believer in energy and essential oils. Carly, she got into essential oils years ago and I, I had that look. I yeah. was like, yeah, whatever. But I, I am, a, I'm a full-time believer. I think they're awesome. Yeah. And so what's, I'm, I think we didn't know, or I didn't know personally was the emotional connection to them, which yeah. is cool. So, so no, I love it. I'm like, know, no, my brain's sitting here going, well, I should be diffusing that in our office so we get busy right. going out to meet people and not be stuck. Well, and if you have someone with a scarcity mindset, which is a block for a lot of people. A hundred percent. Then um, wild orange is the oil of abundance. Oh. So I combine the two. Oh, uh, there you go. Cypress and And then is there another one we should throw in there? Well, ginger is the oil of empowerment. See? So those are the three that we focused on. Those are good. So it was just fun. And then we gave out samples. and Yeah. And got so, this person to help move forward mm -hmm. in her life. Yeah. So you don't, it's not a a, a magic pill or no. anything, but it's a tool to help support. Right. I think that's super cool. How did you get into essential oils? Well, I was living a holistic lifestyle for over 30 years mm -hmm. in Dallas before we moved. Mm -hmm. And that was sort of a a reaction to a prediction from a doctor that I was going to be a diabetic by the time I was 40. I was 35 at the time. If I did not go on a statin, I was going to be a diabetic by 40, and I would definitely die a diabetic, whether I went on the, the medication or not, but it'd be 80 instead of 40. And I left that office. I think sometimes those guys speak things over you that aren't true, right? You know? Well, how dare he try to take my hope away. Amen. And I had already done a lot of work. I mean, yes, the genetics in my family are going to say that that's probably going to happen. But I had already taken a lot of steps. I, you know, I wasn't a smoker. I didn't drink. I was active, active, not thin, overweight. Right. So it was genetic. A lot of it. I didn't understand nutrition, mm -hmm. but I didn't have the emotional eating, food addiction issues my family had, okay. I suspect. Yeah. And so I was already doing a lot of things right. Mm -hmm. But obviously there was a way to improve. And he didn't even say, you know, see what you can do and then check back. It was just you're not leaving without this prescription. So it went in the trash as I went out the door and I found a doctor of oriental medicine down the street and she saw that my thyroid was off mm -hmm. and neither my family doctor or the endocrinologist expert made that connection. 
She said, if you ha- let me get your thyroid balanced, mm-hmm. your cholesterol will be fine. Yeah. And it was. Because your body, I mean, the Lord gave us everything we need to regulate and take care of ourselves. So she introduced me to the value of quality supplements. Okay. And her, she taught me more about nutrition. Mm-hmm. And the numbers were fine. So I would have been on a statin for the rest of my life, which typically leads to other medications. I was going to say, it's got side effects. And so for no reason. Plus, the underlying issue, the thyroid, is going to pop up somewhere. Mm -hmm. So then it's just clouded. You don't know. So that was a huge, like, mind-blowing kind of revelation of the old ways not for me. I The traditional way of treating health issues. Yeah, I was going to say traditional sounds like a better word. The old way, I don't know that the, you know, you should start thinking about the yeah. Chinese medicine True. and Asia, That's you know, old. that was really old. And they, yeah. they were on this stuff. They were like, oh, you need yeah. this or that. So well, I, for that you. got me going in that direction. I'm 66. I'm not a diabetic. I don't, the only time I dip into pre-diabetic numbers is over the holidays when I do what everyone else does. But I know what to do to get back. Yeah. So that's so I was already holistic. It made a lot of lifestyle changes. Yeah. You know, stop the white sugar, the white flour, all those things. Did a lot of research. I love to learn. And so I I still had some problems with sleep. Mm-hmm. And I did need to be on medication for that because I tried everything except oils. I didn't know about them somehow. Mm -hmm. And someone at the office I was working at at the time, she goes, I know you're holistic. Would you be open to trying the oils? Yeah. So we found a combination that worked because it's not the same for everybody. Mm -hmm. And it was just, I was probably the easiest sell ever for some because I was already open to everything. Yeah. Natural, she's like, try this. And then she's waking yeah. you up. Like, no. <laughs> hey, can you pay for that? No. <laughs> so it was. What, or, what's a good combination for people who can't sleep? What's a good oil blend? Well, it depends on what your issue is. Mine is the racing brain. Okay. So if you got to calm so down your brain. You're, you're tired before you go to bed, but the minute your head hits the pillow, you're, you know, it's just going crazy. Is it anxiety or is no, it more just not like. not for me. For you, it's just like a million things I could yes. be doing or ideas popping in my head. Ideas, yes. Yeah. Excitement, too. Yeah. I'm doing what I love. Right. I, there aren't enough hours of the day, you know. And so I, the two oils that were the key thing were vetiver and cedarwood are oils that calm the brain. Mm. And then serenity essential oil blend, the Rusco blend, has those two oils mm-hmm. and lavender and some other things. And uh, so Serenity, I will never be without. And the new one I'm using now, which is really interesting, is called Shin Rin Yoku. Mm-hmm. It's the forced bathing blend. It's literally, do you, know, do you know how when you're out in the woods and all those things from the trees, you sort of, you can smell them, mm-hmm. you can sort of feel them, you mm-hmm. just feel good mm-hmm. and grounded? That's what's in this oil blend. Hmm. So if you can't be outside, you can bring it to you. That's cool. And it helps lower your cortisol, hmm. which, which cortisol is, is that stress fight yeah. or flight. Yeah. So I have now started adding that and breathe for allergies. I have year round. That helps keep your airways open. Mm-hmm. So those three are in my diffuser every night. Yeah. What are some tips about choosing oil? Maybe brands out there that are, you, you can go to, you can go see them at Kroger right, right there in, you know, on the aisles, but there are a million different flavors, companies, they're all trying to sell you oil. I'm sure you have some great advice on what oils are good, better, best, that kind of thing. Well, I'm biased. Of course. Um, I, I use doTERRA exclusively. I'm trying to shamelessly plug you a little <laughs> bit. Uh, they... I am in love with doTERRA, not only for their great oils and their, you know, the testing processes, the transparency. It's There's a very heart-driven. Uncompromising driven. standards. It's a yeah. heart-driven company. Yeah. And so they choose where they get their oils based on the need. So we're in ha- Haiti, Bulgaria, just different places that they're struggling. And we come in and show them how to you know, the sourcing and the, just 
we build well, you know, dig wells and build schools. And that just makes me feel so good that right. I'm getting what I want and need. Yeah. And I'm helping a farmer provide for Get what they need. Families. Right. That's just the. And we're changing the culture because in a lot of those cultures, females are not people. They're not recognized. Right. Which is just awful. And so doTERRA, when they say we need schools or we need, you know, a school, we'll definitely build you a school, but the girls have to come. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Because otherwise they'll just be stuck. Yeah. That's cool. Yep. Yeah. Um, so doTERRA is all ethically, organically healthy sourced. That's we what don't you use mean. the word organic. We don't, yeah. I mean, it's but all. it's, um, you find out that there's no uh, regulation for oils, obviously. Right. So we just have rigorous third party testing outside of our company. And there's actually a number on the bottom of every bottle. That if you put it in the website source to you, mm -hmm. it tracks that bottle. Mm. So you know exactly the testing it went through. That's so the lavender that you get today is going to have the same chemistry as a year from now. That's cool. And that's why doTERRA is trusted more so by doctors and hospitals. We actually are in um, partnership with a, a hospital in Louisville. It's a cancer uh, mm -hmm cancer hospital researcher and yeah. we are in the uh the recovery and rehab piece of it so they have their their treatments mm -hmm. but then they come over to the rehab side and they learn about nutrition they learn about the oils for stress and you know nausea different things and so it's it you're not going to trust a company that's not right tip top yeah yeah so that's it'd be good. good if we could maybe talk about some oils that fight off cancer on the front end like what some something do you have any ideas on that kind of well we don't talk about diseases right because the fda oh. is the the director yeah there you go okay. so um but we can just talk about support okay and so basically just, you're, if you're in rehab or you know you're in the back you're on the back side of it like your I'm cell a, health act is key to everything yeah let's talk that's a better way to go at it let's talk about cell health. cell health so frankincense mm -hmm. is king in many there's a reason that the wise men brought it to yep. jesus yep so frankincense absolutely you'll want that okay for every anything yeah. you're do, doing um, and just but, diffusing that around you a lot, or do you put it on spurt? I actually, for cell health, would be more internally. Okay. So you can actually make your own veggie caps. Uh -huh. It's like a, your own little pill. So for heart health, I do a um, certain combination of oils. And anything you add frankincense to boosts the impact of those other oils. That's cool. So if you know that certain oils are going to be heart healthy and then you add your frankincense that just boosts everything nice that's cool so, so yeah. you take it internally and let it really to go it. everywhere yeah, to go everywhere and but you can diffuse as well yeah um and you can also put it under your tongue or it doesn't taste that great but it's so grounding mm -hmm. and it's it's great for first thing in the morning yeah. because it just gets rid of those cobwebs that's great What's your favorite oil if you had to pick one? You get going on a trip, you only get to pick one oil. Oh gosh. Oh, 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 oh. She's well, thinking, Serenity. I Serenity. I have to. Yeah, so you can sleep <laughs> yeah. and like turn off the brain. I just want to be able to. But I will I do want to say the oils alone are not enough. Right. You have to create or I do. Mine is hardcore. Okay. So I This have is for to, sleep. Yes. Okay. You have to create I had to create a nighttime routine that gave my brain time, gave it those signals to calm down. I can't be on my phone scrolling. I can't be engaged in a movie or whatever and turn it off. And just because the oil's been diffusing, go right to bed right. and sleep. No, it doesn't work that way for me. Yeah. So I have to journal, meditate, you know, get everything turned off as I'm diffusing and give that brain time to calm down that's cool and then do you uh turn the temperature down total darkness that kind of stuff too mm -hmm. do you have like a great sleep environment yep 
Yeah, I've been reading a lot about sleep, learning a lot about sleep over the last few years. And if, have you read the book, Why We Sleep? Uh-uh. You, you will, it'll I blow usually your mind. just because I go, to, I get tired of it and I'm just kidding. But it is a good regenerator. I mean, like you can really recharge your batteries and come out of sleep feeling amazing. That book, I always knew sleep was important. Yeah. But that book explain it's it's a tough read because it's very dense, small print, thick, but it is so crucial that you understand how important sleep is. Right. When I hear someone say, I'll sleep when I'm dead, I want to just slap them. Because that is just a very ignorant thought, right? belief. Because you are literally, if you have any concerns about Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. if you have any concern about aging well, you are not going to skip on sleep. Right. And he basically, and these are all research-based, his findings, mm -hmm. but I think he said something like, even one night of say, five or six hours of sleep versus your seven or eight, mm -hmm. driving with that lack of sleep is like driving drunk. Wow. You do not have the motor skills and it's dangerous. Yeah. So think of all the people who, college kids, factory workers, different people who, you know, or people who are totally in a business mm -hmm. and they're, they think grind, grind, grind. Mm -hmm. It's dangerous. Yeah. I have heard something like that. It is nuts how important sleep is. And and think about it. They they say your your the hours, there's the magic hours between um ten and two, but especially twelve and two, mm -hmm. where your sleep acts like a dishwasher for your brain. And it just gets rid of the plaque and all the other stuff. That's cool. So if you are not, if you're only focusing on eight hours and not when, that's not really the whole picture, which I used to do that till I read that book. Right. You're like, oh, I can get it. As long as I get I eight I can hours, sleep then. in. Sleep 12 to eight, but you're like, no. But that's not serving me, especially as I age. Right. And the, the fear of Alzheimer's and all those things are v more real. Yeah. That's not serving me. So I'm, tr but I'm a natural night owl. So it's very hard. Gotcha. But I am working on it. So and if you block it out, the yep. windows and it's total dark, and there's yep. a lot of things you can do to kind of trick yourself and get your serotonin levels mm -hmm. up and not off. Um, you need your brain working pretty well, though, I because do. you do a lot of other stuff too. Like you have the Fem City thing, you got the oils business, which is big. But on the side or maybe in the forefront, I don't know what you'd put it if you categorized all your... your My hats? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, is a author hat, right? Yes. You've been writing for years. Yeah. How many books have you written over the years? Well, Any I've idea? written a lot, but I've only published two. Okay. Uh, with Harlequin Silhouette, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2005. Okay were the dates they were actually That's cool. published. Yeah. And they were traditional romances. That's just the, you know, I think that's just the upbringing in the little town. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it, it was really fun. I thought I'd do, I'd do it the rest of my life because I had enough ideas, but God had other plans. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't, there were reasons why it was too difficult to sell another one with Harlequin. And it's the only game in town for category romance. So I thought, well, I read mystery, so maybe I'll just try and re write a mystery. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't a, an active mystery writer's chapter in Dallas at the time. So I restarted it, <laughs> of course. That of seems course. to be my MO. There you go. And you're a doer, uh, you get stuff done. Well, I'm not going to drive to Houston, which is five hours away for right. one of their meetings. Right. So I just started that up again, and we started with maybe six people who attended the first one, and by, you know, two years later, there were over 30, and I'd bring in speakers, and because it was mysteries, it was so fun. I had a female FBI agent come talk, and a chief of police from a nearby town that was, could have been a stand-up comedian, 
And you just get to hear all these cool stories and meet the most amazing people. That's awesome. So think about all the skills I learned during that time. For sure. And I never did even try to publish any of my mysteries, but I learned a lot. I learned how hard they are. Mm. And it just wasn't the right time, I guess. I love my plots and my stories and my characters, but it was really hard. And my brain hurt. Yeah. And so then we moved here and the writing just sort of fell off. And then I ended up with the oils. And so, but writing's always sort of been a love. Mm -hmm. And I figured out a way to get the oils into the plot of a romance. Oh, cool. But I just couldn't make myself get serious about it. And then an opportunity came up to do a chapter for a nonfiction book. Okay. And I thought, well, that sounds sort of interesting, Mm -hmm. but it's only 2,500 words. And now people who aren't writers, Mm -hmm. oh my God, how do, how do I get that many? Me, who's used to writing 5,500, it's, how do I do that? In that short, I have so much. Time. Right, I want to condense it. You need to like break it down, like. So, um, but it was very interesting. I met a lot of really cool people, and I met, and the person who organized this was in Fem City. So oh, that's cool. how I had that connection. And is that the book you brought with you? Yes. Uncover yes. your light. Yes, it is a um, empowering stories of hope and resilience. And so there are um, twenty authors. Is that what you said? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna put it up in front of the camera for people to. Check out. Um, Yeah. So tell us about this. Um, What led you to to write this or be a part of it? I didn't know if I would be a good fit because hearing some of their stories, they were very intense and very emotional. Mm -hmm. And I've been very blessed. I, not that I've not had any hardship or anything like that, but overall compared to a lot of trauma. Don't you feel so lucky? I, it's like, I don't know that I fit in here. And my thought for the chapter was more how to, how to get to a place where you are competent enough, you love yourself enough to then move on to more healing. Mm -hmm. And so I have been a personal development junkie since I was like 12, before it was a thing. Mm. And I've grown so much that way and and done a lot of that healing myself. So even though I'm not a formula kind of person, one came to me as I was writing the draft and it was self-awareness plus self should lead to self-acceptance. Self-acceptance then hopefully leads to self-love. And when you get to the self-love piece, then you can turn outward and see how you can make a difference. Yeah. Find your passion, find your place. But if you don't do those three things, if you don't do that work, you're not really caring about anybody else. And I truly believe we're all connected. We all matter. Mm-hmm. So that that's not like a story of overcoming trauma, like so many Mm -hmm. in here. And they're amazing stories. And I just was feeling very like imposter syndrome or something. Right. Like inadequate or whatever. But then you realize. It would be a better fit for a different book. Gotcha. And she says, no, no, no. We need breaks in between those hard stories Mm -hmm. that, that end well, that that are stories of empowerment and And growth resilience but we need a break from that and then also people need that information in order to 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 make those things happen right you absolutely give them tools to heal and grow and develop yeah so um i i went ahead and did that that's cool um just the authors are just phenomenal their stories You'll, you'll tear up. Oh. It's, well, I appreciate you bringing a copy. I'll, yeah. Carly and, and then I'll check I just it out created sure. this little blend called Shine. Shine. That 
sort of went with it, I thought, because there's a grounding element and then an also an uplifting element. So I thought that was sort of apropos for the book. I think it's great. Thank you for sharing a copy with me. And um, yeah. yeah, Carly and I, I'll, I'll pass it on to hers and I'm sure she'll look, look forward to reading it and I'll, I'll definitely read it too, especially your section. And so let's talk about, because I know you've mentioned healing um, a bunch. And so there's emotional, physical, spiritual healing. There's a lot, right? And yes. so um, maybe just broad strokes for our listeners who may be hurting, right? There's a lot of pain in the world. What, where would you say for someone to get started? I mean, would you counseling or would you like go into books first? How would you lead someone into the healing process to where they get to a, just a good, healthy spot? Well, I'm actually addressing all of that in a nonfiction book that I'm writing now with Handy that message. That brought that question. <laughs> with the message of hope and healing. Yeah. And uh, it's sort of describing my journey, but also all the resources. So you don't have to try and figure it all out yourself like I did. And it, it takes a village to be well. It really does. So, but your emotional wellness is so key mm -hmm. because think about it. If your goal, say a common one now is losing weight. If your goal is that, but you are not dealing with some emotional trauma that is why you put on the weight in the first place, you're not going to last long at the gym, even if you get started right. at all. Yeah, You're going to find reasons. You're going to sabotage yourself. Mm -hmm. But the emotional part's hard, and it's painful, really. And uncharted territory for a lot of people. Yes, and there's a stigma still attached. Yeah. I'm telling you, if I could do therapy every month, I would do it. Because it's phenomenal to have someone else just listen and share their expertise. Mm -hmm. it's, it's liberating yeah. to have that. Nothing to fear. Like everybody, mm -hmm. yeah, I think mm -hmm. a lot of people may be like, well, I, I don't know that I want to go dig that up and deal with that. And that's but just going to cause cool me more. Thing. Yeah. In this, in my book that I'm writing now, there's so many modalities that are holistic. You're not adding chemicals, you're no addictions, mm -hmm. but there's modalities where you are not, you're not having to talk it through. You're not having to dig it all up. Uh, EDMR is one oh, yeah. that is super effective mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Tapping is another one. So in some of these, you can just, the tapping, Isn't you can crazy? see yeah. on YouTube how to do it. Yeah. It's free. Look so yeah. it, you have to, def, you have to do enough of an analysis to figure out, is there an emotional component that is keeping me stuck? If not, then there's other things that but I, I cover physical, emotional, spiritual, and financial wellness because that is another piece that isn't spoken. Right, which does help. Yeah, and it's very stressful mm -hmm. if you have your head in the sand. Mm -hmm. and, and especially women who, like even my generation, we, the, the man took care of the finances. Mm -hmm. And... I was never a big breadwinner. Right. So it was, thankfully, I married a good man mm -hmm. and trust him. But he's the one that said, you have to understand what, what we have, where it's at, how to get to it. He pushed me. Yeah. So we need more of that. Yeah. And then that scarcity mindset is just crushing. It can be for sure. Like there's only a limited supply and I've got to get mine. Yeah. And you don't, yeah. I mean, that means I got to hurt you to make sure I get mine. You know? Or just don't even try. No. Oh, yeah. They're like, right. Because somebody else is going to get it before I get there anyway. So I might yeah. as well not even try. Yep. But I love books. I turn to books and of course YouTube and all, there's so much here. There's really no excuse now. Oh my goodness. To not better yourself. Yeah. Isn't it crazy? But what, what you, all you junk in, about? junk out. 100%. You can... Binge watch Netflix, which I've done occasionally, <laughs> but, or you can listen to podcasts or, or videos about cell health, about emotional wellness. Mm -hmm. So there's really, 
and you have people like me and other uh, wellness. I'm not a. I'm more of a wellness mentor, not a well, not a coach. Coach, yeah. Um, I know coaches that I can connect you with. So um, that's what I love to do is also connect people. I do too. That's one of my favorite things. I get asked probably three or four times a day. You got somebody that does this, or know somebody that can help me with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. Um, what do you and your husband like to do for fun in Johnson City slash Jonesboro? We have a Harley. Well, think, so we I think love I remember that. So taking you, those rides. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's our our kids in a candy store kind of thing mm -hmm. moving here. Because yeah. it was not that much fun in Dallas. Right. That, but here it's beautiful outside our front yard. So yeah. that's cool. Um do you eat out much? I do just mainly for networking, but not I don't know if you overall. Had, if you had a date night, where are you and your husband gonna go? Not really, but he loves, uh, he lost his sense of taste During and smell from COVID. Still hasn't recovered. Two years. So, and he loves to eat. So yeah. that's sad. That is really sad. But Project X barbecue? Pro Project barbecue. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, he, he could actually taste it and he loved it. That's so. great. Yeah. Maybe and that'll recover. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep eating it. Just keep eating it. Yep. Um, let's say our listeners really enjoyed this and they want to connect with you. How, how to, what's the best way for them to connect and reach out to you directly? Honestly, uh, my personal page, Becky Russell on Facebook, just friend me, reach out. I just love meeting people and, yeah. um, making new friends. And I, I know a lot of people. So if you're trying to find a certain group or. It doesn't have to be about business. Yeah. It can just be, you know, find a community. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you for re letting me reconnect with you. It's good to see you again, as always. I see you around town having yeah. coffee with people. And it's just always a joy to see you. Same always, here. You're always smiling and just a joy to be with. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the, this book come out. And do you have a title yet? I have a working title. Still in the works. Okay. Yeah. Well, Don't want to commit to it. Everybody, be ready. Be on the edge of your seat for Rebecca <laughs> Russell's new release. She's pushing to get it done by the end of the year, maybe released in the spring of next year. Yep. So right about now, we'll be able to. So we've got to wait a whole year. Well, I'm, I'm going to try and get it done soon. Impatient oil. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I'm sure our listeners enjoyed getting to know you. And she's just a great person. So just reach out to her if you want to join Fem City and promote, learn how to develop your business, remember how to develop you a little bit yeah. and reach out to her. She'll, she'll get you connected and it'll be, it'll be good. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for thank coming you on the podcast. For the opportunity. Uh, no, it's just great. I love, this is what I love doing is connecting with people, helping them and just like you connecting with people. We're great connectors. And so, um, thank you all for listening to the podcast. Um, if you want to come move to Johnson City, have coffee with Rebecca Russell in person, I can connect you with that and to a house here in Johnson City or Jonesboro or Telford, the new up and coming person, <laughs> Elizabeth and all over the place. So we would love to help you buy a house here, make Johnson City, uh, East Tennessee, your home. We also do a lot of property management, Becky. So if you know of anybody looking to need their property as managed, we'd love to help them with that too. Or we can help them buy a rental property and, and manage that too. So anyway. Long story short, I really enjoyed this conversation. I look forward to the next time. I hope you guys do too. Thanks and have a great day.